Hey y'all, it's Bridget Moses um, from Vincent Bridget Moses Godly Encouragement with some more Godly Encouragement for you. Um, today we're going to talk on Psalm 34 verse 8 in the ESV version. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that takes refuge in him. God is nothing other than good. What we, in, what we experience in life may not be good. Our circumstances right now may not be good. We may be dealing with lack, doubt, pain, sickness, dis-ease. We may be dealing with a loved one that has passed. Um, and if you're dealing with that, any of those things really, um, but the loss of a loved one is, is not easy. It's not an easy process to go through. And you're not alone. You are loved. God never changes. He can't change. It's called the immutable character of God. It's impossible for him to change. He is who he is. That's one of the biggest, most wonderful blessings about God is that he can't change and he can't lie. So what he says is written in stone. He doesn't change up. He's not telling us one thing and doing another. He's good. He is good. And he's always good. Even when what we're going through is not so good. We have an enemy and we live in a fallen world where sin has left a big mark and an increasingly stronger mark um, on the world. The devil, Satan, has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come. Be of good, good cheer. I've overcome the world. He said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask, think, or hope. So if that's not what we're experiencing, then we need to know that God will work it out for our good because he is good. God is so good. Look at how good he is. He, he's all-knowing, right? He's all-knowing, so he knew when he created us that we were going to fall short and that we were going to fall for the okey-doke and hand our authority, our dominion, over to Satan. And so he put a fail-safe in the plan. Jesus. And he came to give us life and life more abundantly. What good news. It's such good news that we don't have to do things alone. We're never alone. Even if you don't know God, you're not alone. Even if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're not alone. Your decision, decisions have just placed you farther away from God's heart, which he doesn't want. It's the Lord's will that none should perish, but come to everlasting life through Jesus. And he's the only way. He, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man can come to the Father except through him. He is so good. What what a loving father that he knew that his children would fail. He knew that his children would rebel. And he has sought after us every single time. Every time. Without fail. How exceedingly patient. And there's been many, many times. If you look in the Bible, there's many times. I, that would be a good study to do someday. To... It would be a very in-depth study for sure because there are so many instances where Israel rebelled. And we, as born-again believers, are grafted into Israel. We're grafted into God's chosen people. Chosen people. We're grafted into the Jewish faith where grafted into the Torah, into the word. Jesus is the fulfillment of the Torah. He's the fulfillment of the law, the Mosaic law, and all of the prophets. Every prophecy. Now, this is, this is one thing that just completely blew my mind. There are... I think over 300 prophecies in the Bible. Most of them have been fulfilled. Um, Really, basically, um, Revelation, the ones in Revelation, um, have yet to be. Um, And some others that also deal with end times. But Jesus fulfilled all, all of the prophecies. Talking about his life, have been fulfilled. What book written by man could do that? Hundreds of years before Jesus walked the earth, things were prophesied about him. And those prophecies have been fulfilled. That's no coincidence. That's no, no man could predict that. And it wasn't just one man. It was a number of men and women that did that. That's not possible. That's why God is so good. And the world's definition of God is he's so good, he's just going to look over everything that I'm doing and love me because God is good and he's the only one to judge Yes, he is good, but he's also just. It's not either or, it's both and. God is a loving God and a gracious God. Absolutely. Absolutely. His grace knows no bounds, which means no matter what you've done, if you have raped children, if you have tortured Children, because that's like the worst thing that I can think of any person doing. If you have um, committed bestiality, these are just murder. Um, You know, these things are terrible in not just my eyes, but most of the eyes of the world as well. Um, We know that these things are horrific, right? Even if you've committed those things, all you have to do is repent and receive the gift of God, the gift of God through Jesus Christ. That's all you have to do, the gift of grace. God is so good that someone that is so bad can be forgiven can be redeemed because as soon as we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as soon as we do Romans 
10 verses 9 and 10. We confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. It doesn't say you will be saved unless. No. You will be saved. It's our faith in Christ. It's our confession of faith and our acting on faith. Because there is, without faith, it's impossible to please God. It is us confessing it and acting on it that is what receives the gift that has been made available. And that gift is made available to everyone, regardless of whether you have lived a life of homosexuality. God loves Every person is not especially, but even those who have lived a lifestyle that is not coherent with his word. And that's all of us, all of us, all, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I've lied in my life plenty of times before I knew Jesus. I even lied for a little bit after that because he had to work some things out of me. But that is the same. It's sin. Lying is sin. Even if I were to say, or does somebody say, do I look nice in this? And you know it'll hurt their feelings if you say no. And you say, oh yeah, you look nice. First of all, don't, please don't do that to people. Be honest with them, but be nice in how you tell them. Um, You, you know, I I think you look better in this. You, you know, you're, you're very beautiful, but I just think that that's not the best for you. Excuse me. But that is the same. It's sin. Sexual immorality, which is what homosexuality falls under, is sin. It's us humans that want to put a grading system on sin. Like I said, I am a former drug addict. I've been completely healed and delivered and restored to the glory of God and him alone. But there were plenty of sins that I committed. And Jesus, the great thing about Jesus is he doesn't just forgive your sins, which he does, but he completely removes them as far as from the east is from the west, which means they're no longer there, which means you are not a a sinner saved by grace. You are a saint saved by grace, made new, made a new creation the moment that you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You have made, your spirit man has been made, completely made new. A carbon copy of Jesus' very own spirit, which means you may still have to work some things out in your soul and in your body. But you are a new creation, which means a new creature, which means you are no longer the person that you used to be. And you're no longer bound by the things that used to bind you and used to limit you. It means that Every single word that was said against you, everything you've ever done is erased. No evidence of it. The evidence has been removed and destroyed out of the evidence room. And there is no case because Jesus paid it in full, paid the price, paid the fine, paid the restitution in full, in full. 
You don't have to pay anymore. You don't have to hold on to your sin and the residue of your sin that you've been completely forgiven of. You can let go of the sin, let go of the shame because it's gone. As far as the East is from the West, they don't touch each other. That's a pretty far distance. God loves you and he is good. He is only good. And he can only do good because of it. And he works all things out for our good. When we put our trust and our faith in him, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that takes refuge in him. Take refuge in him today. That means when you're going through something or if you're dealing with some issue, take it to him. Don't run and tell your friends. Don't, you know, call your girlfriends or or your your family or whoever and you know talk about it they can't fix it for you they can't help you somebody told me once don't tell anybody anything that they can't help you that they don't have the ability to help you fix because all you're doing is meditating on the wrong things we got to go to him first He's the only one that can help us with everything and help us to fix everything. And he's not put off by our problems. He's not put off by our anger, even if it's directed at him. And he's not put off by our uh, genuine uh, emotions and state of mind. He's the only one. He said, I cannot heal what you won't reveal. Come to me. All you who labor and are weary and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good when things aren't going good. He's things when he's good when things are. He's good all the time. It's not just a characteristic, it's who he is. He is good just like he is love. But he can't help us if we don't come to him. He loves you. And it's a promise of God. His promises are yes and the amen to those who receive them. Which means that Every single promise of his in his word that he gives us in his word, it's already settled. There is no gray area. There is no, well, I don't know if that's God's will for me. All of his promises are yes to the, so be it, the amen of those that receive him. By faith. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. God loves you. I will keep on saying that all the time. You might get tired of me saying it, but I will continue to say it because we need to hear it all the time. I need to hear it all the time too. I'm no different. God loves you. And he's the only one that can help us walk through our situations. And walk through them victoriously every time. That's a promise when we trust in him. Have a blessed day, y'all. Good talking to you. We'll see you Thursday. Bye.